one of the questions I get a lot is how do I look at reference when I'm trying to draw stuff from imagination? How do you connect the idea of wanting to draw stuff that is unique but has a grounding in reality? How do you actually use reference when you don't want to just copy from it? In this video, I'm going to discuss this and give you some solid tips for how to think about using reference when you're trying to draw cool, interesting stuff from your imagination. Let's get started. All right, just quickly, my name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for 20 years, and I'm here to help you draw cool stuff from your imagination to embrace the challenge of drawing and to master the craft of line and color illustration. Now, I'm one of those people who has always wanted to draw stuff from my imagination. I grew up looking at comic books and video games, and I just wanted to do that stuff. That's what I wanted to do with my life, create things from my imagination. I just assumed that that's kind of how other people were doing it, and that's what I wanted to do myself. When you look at how to use reference, the first thing that's going to really help you is getting the idea that what we're extracting from reference is not the visual two-dimensional representation of what the thing is. So I'll use two examples. One is the idea of maybe drawing armor, because that's something that I often do. I'm drawing fantasy things, and we need to draw armor. The second thing might be something like a pirate ship. Again, that's something I've had to draw. So if we look at the idea of armor, what I'm trying to do is draw that from my imagination, from different angles. And the reference will help me, but what I'm mostly interested in is the functionality that that reference gives me. So we're trying to extract not just like, oh, like what does it look like so I can copy from it? And the way that I use it and I recommend that you use it, if you want to draw stuff from your imagination, is to find reference that shows functionality and breaks down, like for instance, how armor works. What are the different layers for armor? And, and that can vary depending on the culture. Um, a Japanese sort of samurai armor is going to be layered differently. It's going to be made out of different things than, you know, Western European armor at the peak of that sort of medieval armor, you know, where they, they got the full plate armor. So that's going to work very differently to, again, stuff from different cultures. And I feel like your job is to actually functionally understand how that works. And that might seem like, oh, that's a lot more sort of work than I wanted, but I hate to break this to you, but that is both one of the you know best things about being an artist is you get to study and understand the world. And the more that you understand it, the more you are able to actually sort of create your own version of it. So the more you actually functionally understand the thing you're trying to draw, say armor, like again, how's it created? How do the plates overlap? What do you put on first? What's underneath the armor? How does it articulate? How does the functionality of what it looks like relate to kind of how it was actually used? And again, armor is a good example there because it has a lot of weird visual stuff that is actually linked very much to functionality. If you think about pirate ships as another example, how do we draw that? Well, there's a lot of things there that you might sort of understand that need to be on a pirate ship. You've got the masts and you've got the kind of rigging and you've got those little kind of, there's often one of the most iconic things about pirate ships is they've kind of got those um, pulleys right at the bottom of the um, rigging where people climb up and down. And the question is, what does that stuff actually do? And how does it actually attach to the ship? So I guess the for me, like the way that the less effective way to kind of use reference is to try and say, oh, I need to draw a pirate ship from this angle or that angle. And then what you do is you go and try and find a photo that is from that angle. What I would suggest you do is that you understand in your own mind how the pirate ship is built as much as possible and to understand how all ships are built and what's, you know, what's down there, what's in the, you know, inside the ship, um, 
you know, how the masts held up. What is the functionality behind that? Where are those things attached? There's a lot of these ropes on a pirate ship. And once you start to break it down, you kind of realize why they're all connected to each other. And then that's when it becomes a lot easier for you to kind of just draw it from different angles and understand what's going on there. And again, to get in your own head, okay, I've got to have masts and a rigging and sails. But again, how does the mast attach to the ship? Um, you know, how do the sails attach to the ship? It's often those connection points that you really need to understand from a functional perspective. And again, where you have all the pulleys that kind of adjust the rigging, the question is like, well, what are they attached to? And where is that attached to the ship? Is it attached, um, you know, on the outside? Or is it attached more like sort of in the inside? Again, it's those little subtle details that you kind of just need to know. And it's not a matter of finding the something from the right angle and then hoping that you're going to be able to kind of always find it from that same angle. The important thing to do there is get very clear in your own mind what that thing is and to understand that the deeper you understand it, the better. And the main takeaway from that point is that you should look for reference um, to add to your collection of reference that shows that functionality, that breaks down how a pirate ship is built, how all the little things connect to each other. Um, and like armor, again, see if you can find some reference, some historical photos of it, of the actual real thing broken down and to see if you can find some information about how that stuff connects. And again, once you do that, you understand and you build your own knowledge of how that thing functions. And then you can draw it a lot easier from different angles. And you can also modify it if you want to create your own designs. The second thing that will really help you is to understand that while we have functionality that sort of underpins the details and the context and the usage, the other thing that will tend to really make people, make your viewer understand what you're trying to create and say, oh, that is Japanese armor, that is European armor, that is a ship, it looks like a pirate ship, is to understand the iconography. And the iconography are the things that people expect to see. They are the larger silhouettes, the larger kind of forms the primary forms and again the major silhouettes that make up that particular thing so if you look at armor again people are sort of going to expect some sort of breastplate they're going to expect some sort of shoulder pad and there are sort of patterns and iconic sort of ways that those function and that they look a good example with armor would be that your typical world of warcraft um, modern sort of video game fantasy armor has these giant shoulder pads Okay, these things are completely absurd and ridiculous and don't have any functionality um, and don't really relate to how armor really functions or would be, you know, useful if you compare it to actual versions of European armor that kind of has those shoulder pads and things. But people think that that looks like armor. The iconography is there and the iconography dial is turned all the way up to 11. And so people kind of accept it as that is armor even though, again, it doesn't make much sense or doesn't have much functionality. So that's where, again, if you can extract the core iconic point from a particular subject, like what, what is the thing that really makes it feel like it does? And what is the thing that other people really recognize there? Once you get that, that allows you to sort of simplify things and often, again, you know, get most of the way there without, you know, doing, you know, going to the nth degree with all the detail, let's say. So again, it's a major point. You, you can understand the functionality um, and you can draw it as much as you want. But if you don't get the iconography, then it's very diff difficult to simplify it um, or sort of modify it while still retaining that sort of feel that you want. Another example here would be if you have a pirate ship. So to a certain degree, again, as I said, the iconic points of a pirate ship are masts, sails, rigging. 
and there's a certain amount of visual complexity that people see when they're looking at ships there's just a lot of ropes everywhere and again there's those um you know those sort of pulleys around the place again the sails the way the sails look and um, again this is something that i would use when i'm trying to simplify um, a pirate ship for you know it's one of the books that i created like seven pirates I didn't really understand all of the functionality all the time. Um, and again, I was still learning to get you know good at this stuff at that point. That was very sort of early on in my sort of drawing journey. But what I was trying to do is grasp the core iconic things that I knew, look, if I put these in there, everyone's going to agree that is a pirate ship, right? It is, it is a ship. It is a tall ship from, you know, the golden age of pirates, let's say. And again, that is often more important than the functionality and it uh, underpins your ability to design and modify. So very, very important iconography. Make sure you can extract that and try and understand that as much as possible. Now, the third and last thing is that if you do want to create stuff from your imagination, you need to build your fundamental form drawing um, and foundational skills in order to do this. And that is because, again, the core system that we're using is to look at reference, understand it from a functional standpoint, and then almost recreate that. So the more that you can understand, for instance, how you might sort of have a form, right? So you can think about you're trying to draw armor or something like that. And the question is, like, how does the armor sort of wrap around this particular form? That's the question, right? Like sort of what, what does it look like? How do I sort of modify that? How do we sort of change those shapes? If you want to learn more about construction drawing and building things in three dimensions on a two dimensional page, something I can share with you is my tips on head construction. I've got a cool guide that goes over the top five mistakes that people tend to make when they're starting out drawing heads. And we talk about that from the perspective of construction drawing, using construction systems like the Loomis method and just general tips that will really help you get a solid feeling with your faces. So check that out. It talks directly to this idea of constructing things and drawing in three dimensions. Now, this is very sort of simple foundational art stuff. Um, and you've probably heard of this concept before, but one of the reasons that building that is so useful is because it allows you to look at reference and say, oh, I kind of understand what's going on there, right? It's, it's like a metal plate kind of wrapped around the shoulder, um, or it's, you know, it's a metal plate kind of wrapped around the arm. Or if you're looking at, you know, straps, if you understand the physicality of the torso, then you kind of understand, okay, there's like straps wrapping around that form. So it's a mix of that, of building that foundation and understanding the functionality. And once you combine those two really important things happen. One is that you can sort of create your own because if you understand the functionality, you can kind of modify the shapes a little bit. And if you sort of know how to draw them, what you find is often all that makes up drawing stuff that looks like things is just getting those basic concepts right. You know, if you're trying to draw armor, you're just sort of drawing, again, plates wrapped around the form. And if you understand just the basic shapes that they should be, you understand the functionality for that. And then you can just draw sort of plates wrapped around form. You'll find like, then you can draw armor. It's that simple. Um, the trick is that you're trying to combine a couple of fairly tricky things and you need to practice that. But there's no secret to it beyond that. One, you'll find if you do just practice those things and you put them together, your stuff will make sense. You'll be able to draw armor. You'll be able to draw the pirate ship. There's no secret to it. Um, a lot of it just understanding functionality and building your visual library for what you need to draw. Um, and again, visual library just is sort of relates to that first point, right? It's like, how much do I understand of the world, right? How much of the world do, can I break down from a functional standpoint? There's probably things in your life that you understand functionally. Um, you know, you might be into skateboarding or, you know, riding bikes or, you know, horses. Anyone's, everyone's got like something they're kind of interested in. Um, and you probably have a really good understanding of the functional, you know, way that that stuff works. It's just a matter of building that library. 
right? So again, you know, when you need to draw a pirate book, you know, you need to build your library for cutlasses, you know, how do powdered wigs look, you know, what does a tavern look from the, you know, the late 1700s, um, you know, what does an English street look like from the 1700s? How do those pirate ships work? How do you draw a cutlass? How do you draw a flintlock pistol? And it's not just like, again, looking for reference of those things, but it's building your understanding and your visual library for how those function. But there is a second reason why, again, building this um, sort of functional drawing, right? Being able to draw the, you know, the, the different plates and the things kind of, you know, wrapping around each other and understanding, again, sort of how those forms will tend to kind of work. And that is that the better you are at that, the more you can kind of just make up little details and kind of fill in those gaps. So, you know, often what you're trying to do is kind of extrapolate this massive reference. And, you know, often you, you don't have a full visual library. You don't have all of the pieces there. But again, as long as you've got the iconography, if you have, again, the, the, the foundational drawing skills, you can kind of just sort of say, well, you know, I've got this bit of armor sort of wrapping around here or something. And like, how does it connect here? Again, if you have the, the drawing foundational stuff, you can kind of just make something up. You can say, well, this makes sense. Maybe there's a buckle going here or something. So it is having the drawing skill and building that foundational drawing skill that will allow you to kind of extrapolate, fill in gaps in the reference, and again, make assumptions about it, um, which again is part of the, that's part of the, the real trick of it, you know, is sort of saying, well, look, I don't have all of the reference, but I've got enough and I can make an educated guess for how that works. And because I've built the foundation, you can kind of draw most of the things that you need to draw. So again, there's, those are the two reasons why I think, again, building that, you know, foundational drawing skill is really important. Um, again, the first is that it just allows you to actually, you know, take that stuff and, you know, modify it and, you know, create your own design. And it, it also allows you to fill in gaps, which is really, really important. If you're just looking at reference and, you know, you're sort of struggling and you can't sort of build these forms yourself, it's very, very challenging to use the reference um, effectively. You become a slave to the reference as opposed to being able to sort of use it, manipulate it, and again, use that reference to build your own visual library. Anyway, that's all I've got. Hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if these concepts are useful or if you've got any other questions relating to visual library or reference or how to use reference. But other than that, catch you around. Happy drawing.